Welcome back to Philippines Uncut. I'm Buddy Conana. Tonight's topic is reflections on the Corona impeachment trial. And joining me still are uh, Ms. Jing Mable and Mr. Jun Estrella yes. of Tangulang Demokrasya or Tandem for short. Welcome back, folks, for our second segment. And uh, in our first segment, we talked about uh, the origin of the impeachment case in the lower house. And uh, we talked about the different dynamics that went into play in why this impeachment case, uh, the articles of impeachment were passed in the lower house with such undue haste, in possible scenarios, what could, could have contributed to that. Minuman po, let's move to the upper house. From the lower house, impeachment, <laughs> impeachment uh, articles of impeachment go to the upper house, and uh, let, let's talk about what happened in, in, in the Senate. So, what were your, um, your, I mean, what are your views on the general conduct of the trial in the upper house? Sir. Well, uh, as far as the Senate uh, uh, trial is concerned, I think they follow the rules, except that uh, there is one particular rule wherein uh, I think the defense cannot uh, question uh, uh, a particular senator judge in, uh, in his questioning of the, of the witness. Uh, I think in, in the United States it's different. The defense can protect or uh, can also uh, request uh, some questions to the senator judge why such uh, things are being asked of the of the witness yeah. uh, so there's that difference however overall i think the the trial went uh, as the rules are uh, are, are followed yeah. however from a from a layman's point of view from a fairness point of view i think there are uh, there are some gaps that needed to have been corrected at that time the very first one is there was a question on whether the, the process of impeachment at the lower house uh, has got to be checked first before it went to the, to the, to the Senate. Yes, yes. In, that, in that stage, I think the, the court should have focused on that first before, before yes. proceeding to the exercise. Yes. Otherwise, they would have said that, that that particular process is already legal. That's already a decision that they've made. Wasn't there any question? I think uh, Attorney Adaza and, and some other uh, lawyers were, point, were, were questioning yeah. that. And yes. Attorney yes. Alan Padilla yes. were, were, were questioning that. Yes. And uh, how come that's true? It should have been pointed out before, before the Senate acted on it. And right. they did. Uh, as I told you, the day before, the IBP governors held a press conference. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Filing an impeachment complaint against a high government official is a serious matter. So there should be two things, according to the lawyers, that should be followed. One, the complainant should be an eyewitness. He should have actual first-hand knowledge. No? Yung meron bang knowledge, 188. And then the uh, impeachment complaint should be based on authenticated documents. Okay, let's define this. What do you mean by authenticated documents? What does it mean? Uh, yung documents that are duly signed by uh, ano, by the yung issuing agency yes. and uh, which have been uh, uh, verified no, by the prosecutors themselves. Yes, yes. But as it happened, as the trial was unfolding, I mean, the public is... Uh, regaled by this uh, prosecute, pre prosecution team that seems to be on a fishing expedition, you know? Na they were looking for something that would nail uh, Corona. Well, you know, Dapat meron ng, but they had know, a lot of help. There was a small lady who, who gave uh, some documents to, to one of the prosecutors. Yung isa naman, nahanap dun sa labas ng gate. They found some documents hanging outside the gate, if you believe that, uh, that, that story. Don't so. you find that funny? Funny? Oh, you know, isn't that ridiculous? The, the reason why I said that is, if you tell me there's a lady that has given this to you, at least you must know that individual. And she wouldn't uh, at be least you identified. must ask her, why are you giving this to me? Mm -hmm. you know? And I ask her, who art thou? You know? yes. uh, so I can believe you because I cannot take the word of just anybody and anything that is given to me, hook, line, and sinker, and I will charge the Chief Justice Chief of Justice the Philippines of the land, with such. You know? And then you go to town in the media, you present it as a gospel truth almost. Yeah, that the, that the and I think, uh, uh, if you ask my opinion about yes. it, I think the first issue that was settled before the trial proceeded was whether there is really such a case 
that against the chief justice. Mm. An impe uh, impeachable offense. Uh, an impeachable, impeachable offense against the chief justice. And that should be based on a preliminary investigation, which I think was requested. Now, the, and the, it was denied. Yeah, what, uh, what happened was it was denied. Now, what was the basis of the denial? Because if you happen to know as, as what happened, you have decided, and then suddenly it was found out at a later date that it should not have been there in the first place. How do you now correct the situation? Which is you exactly have damaged, what we have now. Yeah, yeah, the precisely. reputation of It's not only the, the reputation of the individuals, the grief, uh, etc., that they suffered, but essentially that's a stab at the democracy of the, the democratic principles of the Philippines. You know. If that can be done to a chief justice, it can be done to an ordinary citizen. And more. And more. Yes. You know, that's, the, that's the big, big question mark there. Now, are we prepared to experience that particular scenario? Yes, yes. No, no, it, it, very frightening, absolutely. Yeah, it is. Very frightening. Yes, it is, it is. And, um, I, and I guess the point that I would like yes. to say is, if, for example, it was a senator that is now in the position of the chief justice, would they still allow it? That such a thing can, can happen? Good question. Yeah. Good and question. I, 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 you know, uh, a Jesuit priest told me that whenever you point, you know, uh, to other people, uh, to other you people. know, one one finger points to you, the three fingers point to you, and <laughs> this is the, and there's <laughs> only one who really knows the truth. <laughs> now, if they're just practicing that principle uh, thing there, I think they will start to say, oh, you know, if this happens to me, will I accept it? Will it be fair to me? That's I, I guess that's the only question that is uh, in the minds of people now. Yes, let's talk about the 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 accusations against the Chief Justice. And uh, a lot of people have been saying that um, these weren't, didn't really constitute impeachable offenses. What does Tandem's position about, about what eventually nailed the Chief Justice, his sal N, the statement of assets and liability in that worth, his purported, purported uh, misdeclaration or, or, or uh, falsification or whatever you call it of his, of his sal N. What is Tandem's position with regard to this? Um, are his, you talking? Yes, yes. Um, if we will recall the impeachment trial of uh, Clinton of the U.S., he was confirmed to have lied about his relations with that uh, woman. But lying is not an impeachable offense, but it, it is immoral, no? It's ganun din yung ano eh, parang nangyari dito sa... Uh, Sabi doon na betrayal of public trust yun. Well, you, that's stretching it a bit too far, diba? uh, But if we listen to the serious side of uh, Senator Santiago's explanation, the accomplishment of that sal -en is a correctable uh, offense, no? And it shouldn't be stretched to... Uh, to uh, cast doubt on the competence of uh, the Chief Justice. In the same way that in the U.S., when Clinton lied and the media made such a big brouhaha about uh, a lying president, uh, much less a, a, a fornicating president, yes, yes. Uh, we should have uh, no, uh, the, the, those judges in the Senate should have applied the same, the same rule because the, the, uh, the accomplishment of the sal -en or the non-accomplishment of it is not an impeachable Absolutely. Uh, crime. And you know, um, um, I think many people in government who have experience in government would agree with me when I say this, that you know, for the longest time, when, when people get appointed to the government, or uh, the sal is just something to, to, you know, it's a requirement that, that no one really took seriously. I mean, like, like uh, people accomplished it because they had to, to submit this in, uh, in order for them to, to be appointed to, to a certain office. And, uh, you know, but since, you know, people weren't as diligent maybe in, in really accurately 100% uh, fulfilling the sal and requirements. And so, when we talk about the people who are judging him and the people who are trying him in the Senate, a you know, good question would be how many of them have, have really accomplished <laughs> proper <laughs> sal and have really declared all the assets? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I think the, the next question now, after this thing has happened, <laughs> was, what do we do next year? 
when we get the salary of these people, of impeachable people, not just everybody, what will we do now when we find out that not everything was declared in the salary? Will that be an automatic impeachment, impeachment for these for people? Everyone? I will everyone. Yes, yes. And Please. if we will recall the explanation of all those uh, righteous sounding senators, no? that uh, they even uh, uh, admired uh, t uh, corona for signing the waiver, hindi ba? So, what would now uh, prevent people from demanding the same stringent uh, measure to be applied to, them. to all to them? No, to all those uh, high I mean, government they, they officials. They should. I mean, for you to cast judgment on someone, you've got to also uh, apply the same rule to yourself. Otherwise, you lose the moral ascendancy, I think. Precisely, yeah. precisely. Oh, in fact, in fact <laughs> I think in the long run, corona might get his own against all these people. <laughs> By opening this Pandora's box. Pandora's box. And this uh, waiver thing and sal and thing seems to be having a life of its own. Is there a groundswell, sir? Do you, do you notice in, in your talks, in your discussions with different groups that there is a groundswell from the public uh, of people, you know, wanting public officials now, regardless, from the president down, to, to sign a similar waivers? Is there a clamor, a growing clamor for this? Well, not so much in individual discussions, but the in, in the internet, in the blogs, in the emails uh, that you see, there's now a, uh, a very big increase in the clamor for people to really sign this all end because that becomes a, uh, a document that's, that says, that tells you about the integrity of the individual. If you have nothing to hide, what will prevent you from signing something? And if you, you, that, if, you uh, if, if, if you refuse to that, sign, that, uh, why? Why? Right? why? <laughs> the next question. Yeah, why? So that was the same argument, of course, that was used to to get uh, the chief justice to issue out that to waiver. waiver. But now that it was uh, given out, what prevents you now from doing the same thing and says, yeah, I'm. Uh, well, uh, you know what uh, Senator Drillon said. Senator, uh, the, the very honorable Senator Franklin Drillon, <laughs> he said that uh, wait, if I, if we sign these waivers, it will do damage to the banking industry. So, oh, uh, <laughs> so why did they ask uh, said that, said Corona that the to? Yeah. yeah. Yes. So why now did they ask Corona to do the same thing? Now, I have a, um, were you surprised with the twenty to three vote to convict uh, former CJ Corona? Well, uh, I was expecting personally. I was yeah. expecting sixteen, maybe or seventeen, but I, the twenty was something that even surprised me. What did Tan didn't expect? Well, I think for those uh, that we discussed within our circle, yes. we, are, we were thinking that at most it will be about 14, uh, which means that uh, uh, they cannot go for a conviction. We did 16. Eh? Okay. Uh, however, uh, I think it also has the same impact when it comes to the serial voting and when the rest in the alphabetical listing have already found out that That's more it. or less yeah, the, yeah. there is a uh, there is already a trend towards uh, conviction. Some of them would have changed already their positions. Wala bang ano wala bang sarili isip? I mean, base, if, if that really happened, okay, that I kind of that. serial voting happened. Well, I think uh, if my my opinion on that is the fact that everybody says this is a political process, yes, yes. which tells me that they will hide behind a decision behind a political decision. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you, if you do that with such a very important case like this, then everybody is now looking at, if it, if it is a political decision, okay, where is your moral standing on this one? Yes. Where is your integrity? Where is your honesty to the people that, is really, uh, that you are rep representing? Well, I think this is why almost every senator, when they're asked to explain their vote, all of them are saying, oh, they feel sad, they feel, uh, they mm -hmm. feel bad that this happened, but in the end, they also voted to convict. So I think, you know, I think, I think there really was um, maybe a, a clash or a conflict inside each one where each center probably had to vote, had to weigh things and, and you know, maybe reality and what one really felt and uh, cast, uh, cast his or her vote based on that. But on that note, I, I, I would really like to commend uh, Senator Bong Bong Marcos and the, t and, and the t two other senators for, for, for really voting against the uh, according know, to their conscience yes and not and not uh, apparently not not uh, because of what the crowd uh, or, or what the great wants majority to hear, you know. what they think the yes. crowd wants to hear yes mm -hmm. and uh, well with this uh, exercise i think uh, senator marcos has uh,
become his own man. He is not just the son of a former Philippine president. Yes. And that he has the guts to go against the tide. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, well, there are some friends who have said that they are looking at uh, Senator Marcos under a new light yes. because of uh, this thing that happened. Mr. Estrella, what is the effect now on, on, on society now that uh, clearly um, the administration has really rammed its agenda? I mean, uh, it has really done everything, thrown the entire weight of the government and state resources to, to achieve this, this, this objective of removing C.J. Corona. And he's, now he's out. What is the effect now on, on, on our society? Well, let, uh, let me premise that on the principle of control in a democracy. Uh, just like a corporation, the control is you have a maker, you have a checker. It's like a triangle. And you have a decision maker in this case. In this case, the executive is the maker. The, uh, the legislative is the checker, okay? and the Supreme Court is the one that decides on uh, whether that is uh, within the law, the rule of law or not. Now, the moment, the moment the three different branches of government now become one, okay, that is no longer a democracy, because whoever controls that one okay, controls the three parts. Mm. In this particular case, you have to now look at the integrity of that one, whether he becomes a uh, benign uh, dictator, okay, quote unquote. You, you're using the word dictator, uh, that's a very strong term. No, yeah, that's a strong term because at the end of the day, if the three becomes one, then what do you have? Mm -hmm. it, it, there's no more check, there's no more balance, check and balance. Then you have now a dictator. Now, better if that dictator is a benign dictator, but suppose it is not a benign dictator then you have a, you have a problem. Uh, the, the people who have voted for them will have a, a uh, really a very difficult uh, time to, to find out whether their, their uh, freedom will really be uh, preserved. Yes, and you know, our constitution and our system of government are set up is basically patterned after the United States. It's Precisely, three balances. Yeah. Pattern of a structure of government. And yes. I think the founding fathers in, 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 in the US probably for, saw that ahead the danger of putting power, uh, as you said, uh, yes. almost complete yeah, really. power in the hands of one ma person or one, or, or one branch of government. Yeah. It is, it's a, a patently a very dangerous, very risky thing to do. It is a, it's really a very, da even, even, even in a corporation, it's a very dangerous uh, situation where you have only one man. You you know, chairman, CEO, general, president, yeah. in one, there's, no, there, there's no more check and balance. That's right. Yes. yes. And it, are you saying, uh, let's say, Ms. Mabla, this is what we have now yes, in the Philippines? Yes. Yeah, so, in fact, while we were aping the U.S. Uh, setup, in the U.S., it's Congress that has the power of the purse. But in our setup, the power of the purse and the executive are... Yes. In, in the executive branch, yes. you know. So, um, outright, there is already a uh, preponderance of uh, power in, in one branch. May, may imbalance na. That is also why um, yung my group has uh, advocated for uh, charter change, yes, no? Yes. Because uh, we have to sort of balance the powers of all these uh, branches of government in such a way that um, we, we totally um, we, we totally um, there's some discard yes. the yes. possibility of a dictator yes. you know yes. uh, emerging yes. Um, Ms. Pablo, Ms. Uh, Mr. Estrella, we've come to the end of our show. Quickly, before we, we go, would you, like to say, would you like to say something to the viewers? Um, I think this uh, impeachment trial has divided the country. No? And um, like uh, I said, this uh, signing of the waiver that has been so strictly applied in the case of Corona is assuming a life of its own. And that um, people at least people who are thinking are thinking of measure of applying the same measure to the others in the high places of government so actually may i know may i uh, bring out a phenomenon that is uh, happening now 
and that will be launched this uh, June 12, which is our Independence Day, is um, the an oust uh, Penoy movement, no? That will be uh, launched on June 12 at the Plaza Miranda, and which will uh, showcase or which will show the outrage that uh, thinking people uh, feel about this, this uh, travesty of our democracy. Anyway, uh, Mr. Estrella, thank you very much. Ms. Ms. Mable, thank you very much for joining us here in Philippines and Cut. And we look forward to covering your issues and, uh, you know, and, and having you on the show again to discuss events and uh, other social awareness uh, concerns. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, very much, thank you for thank you. Uh, inviting yeah. us. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. That's it for today for Philippines and Cut. Join us again next week here in the show where we talk about Mass View because you matter the most. See you next week.